Bernardo Silva, on it goes to Alvarez, Alvarez up towards Haaland, it's just beyond it, Doku tries to get to it, Aarons clears it, and that will be the end of a very, very good first half. Andy, what's been the highlight of this game for you? Uh, Doku's been exceptional, he's been unplayable at times, especially when you're playing against the five, it's hard to stop it, um, it's very hard to get any space, and yet he's been exceptional, and just watching Haaland... Uh, you know, with a heavy limp they're coming off so maybe we might not see in the second half but that first goal was key from there on now it's been a procession it really has so City were at 0-0 going into the 30th minute but Doku played a lovely 1-2 with Rodri to open the scoring he then combined with Bernardo Silva who made it 2 and then he hit a shot which span off Akanji's backside and in for number 3 the only downside is that Haaland appears to be limping away we shall see at half time though at the Etihad it is City 3 Form of nil. Well, let's go back to the studio where Keith Curl, Steve Howie, and Julian Lescott are alongside Cal. Welcome back to the Match Day Live studio, live from the Etihad Stadium, where it is currently Manchester City 3, Bournemouth 0. A brilliant first half of football here to help dig into all the first half action is Steve Howie, Jolie and Lescott and Keith Curl. Steve, I'm going to come to you for your assessment, please, of those first 45 minutes. Comfortable, assured, in control. Mm. I think the, the words that I'd use. And Docco, Docco for me, has been... Um, just the, the complete difference. I mean, obviously, I think everybody's played the part and everybody's played well. Bernardo Silva's been excellent. Um, but Doku's caused a major problem. So as we, we spoke about him in the game and how, how he fronts defenders up and stops and starts and checks and inside and out. Um, does really well for the first goal. I was kind of unsure, actually, I'm thinking as, his, as he scuffed it a little bit, as it took a deflection, but it's a really good finish. Um, and for the second goal, I think if the camera goes actually back out on the pitch, you'll still be able to see the, the full-backs getting twisted out the ground. He's <laughs> turned them inside out that many times. But you can imagine the, the, the full-back on, on the, in the first 20 minutes that had Doku, he's now looking towards his, his teammate on the other side thinking, that's what I had to deal with for the first 20, 25 minutes. So, so difficult to contain and obviously he's been the massive difference. It really has indeed. I mean, uh, a, a goal possibly two, but we think we're going to give that to a Kanji. We'll speak about that in a second and an assist. Jolene, uh, Alistair Mann said it in commentaries with Andy Morrison over on the Manchester City app. 30 minutes, nil-nil, and, and then suddenly, you know, City kind of found that goal and the rest is kind of there for everyone to see. How much of it is, it's just how good City have been, or do you think Bournemouth have maybe not helped themselves? But I thought they defended well to Yeah, me. no, I thought they've done what we assumed they were going to do, try and sit deep, whether that was the tactical, whether that's been forced by the, the domination of, of us, but... So they haven't made mistakes, they've just been undone by quality and that can happen any given time and we've seen, especially for the Bernardo's goal, like the quality of Doku, that's probably isolated to him, he's probably the only one that can do that on the pitch, so listen, you can't fault Bournemouth for their trying or their approach to the game, it's just kind of, this is how it's going to play and we've seen them when they are getting out, it's the one player that has to travel with the ball half the length of the pitch and that isn't a style that you can practice um, and just rely on to, to get you out of trouble. Um, how pleased do you think Pep is going to be with those first 45 minutes, Keith? It feels across the board. I mean, I can't really remember Bournemouth troubling, but it was so accomplished from every player on the pitch. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, after 30 minutes at nil nil, uh, we had a few half chances, but you're thinking, that, is it going to be one of those days? And then as soon as the goal goes in, then you get to get the second goal straight away, vitally important. Because then, and then, right, obviously, the third goal game over as a, as a contest. Um, and again, you, you see Bournemouth sitting deep and getting men behind the ball, but that's just not enough. They've got to be aware of the spaces that City want to work in. And again, but that's what when you watch City or you analyse City, uh, their movement off of the ball, they take people out of the areas they want to work in. Excellent to watch. I was I was actually where I sat over in the corner quite a bit on the right hand side, and when it was Kovacic, Bernardo, and I think Julian Alvarez, you could see it's only small movements, but a little move on the inside. It's mad how much space that creates. It's, it's kind of fractions, really. Isn't yeah, well, it? sometimes you, you get Alvarez will go up uh, and play alongside Ireland to get marked, and then he come into that space and then if the, if the centre back goes goes with him into that space then it's great space for Haaland to go and work in and then if the centre back doesn't stay because he's worried about Haaland then the next thing can you get the ball to Alvarez because nobody can mark him yeah I feel so sorry sometimes for players defending against City let's uh, go through the goals then as I say 30 minutes kind of there wasn't too many kind of clear cut chances but uh, that man who's I mean already I feel like could be uh, the, the man of the match uh, Doku with, with, a, with a beautifully taken first goal Steve talk us through it 
Yeah, I mean, as I said, the fullback, he doesn't, he doesn't know to stick or twist. Show him inside, outside. Obviously, he's, he's thinking, as a fullback, he's more or less thinking, I want to show him inside because I can get some help in there. And he comes inside and he plays a great little one too. I think with Rodri. Mm. Rodri's layoff is brilliant because there's, there's a bit of pace on the ball to him. And he takes the pace off and just sets it up absolutely superbly well. As I said, I wasn't sure if it was like a scuff or a deflection, but when I've looked at the replay, he's just fed it in lovely. It was a beautiful, beautiful finish. He, he did that from the left hand side where we started. And, and as Keith that said, you know, we get that second goal very quickly, but from that man again, but this time he was he was over on the right. And yeah, talk us through. He was a lovely assist for Bernardo. Yeah, I, I, I can try and talk you through it. Like, <laughs> I have had that ability, but it, it's so like it looks so chaotic. But he's in so much control. Mm. He's doing it. His legs are moving so fast. He's he's dragging the top of the ball. And what uh, I do recognise is that his fake shot or fake cross, whatever it may be, it's the same tempo as his cross. So that is the fool in the defenders is that his momentum and his attempt to cross the ball is the same. So yeah. the fact that you have to then block it or go to attempt to block it, then all of a sudden at the last instance, he drags it on the top of the ball and then your momentum's and your balance is off, key, off key and yeah, he's so effective at that. He'd, he'd had a couple of shots, Bernardo, actually. There was a couple kind of well-worked corners. There was a second one that was really close, but I think he's, he's deserved his goal. But I think that was maybe his third or fourth shot of the, the half. Yeah, I think he's, he's recognised as opportunities for him to score. Um, he's took on probably more opportunities than we've seen him in, in recent games. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's seen the space and he's, he's kind of waited for the opportunity to arise because there was only a small gap between the midfielders of, of Bournemouth and, and, the, and the defenders. And again, I, like I said, I don't think anyone's done anything wrong for Bournemouth. I just think it's the quality and the, the intelligence of, of Man City. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Keith, the, the third goal, um, we think it's going to go down as an, uh, an Akanji own goal. Well, oh, sorry, an Akanji goal, sorry, because it took a deflection from a, a Doku shot. Yeah, um, we had the, well, we've had the benefit of seeing and I think it was slightly going wide right. as well, so it's got to be an uh, Akanji goal. The type of goals I wouldn't mind scoring myself, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but no, but, but again, it shows the purpose. The, the set, set piece is, is an interesting one. How Bournemouth are marking, they're more worried about marking the goal. But the, the city are lining up for shots on the edge of the box, and you're thinking that's a dangerous game to play. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm, do you think that'll maybe change? Because me and my dad were saying that every time you think. Well, the, the short corner's on because it's like there's a, there's a three on two. So what, what, what is the thinking there that they're more worried about the aerial threat in the box? Or? Yeah, I think so. And, uh, and also the delivery, but it's just, um, they're being cut, cut open as well uh, from those set pieces. Again, I think probably the interesting thing is how you think, right, so if you're a Bournemouth manager, you think, right, uh, how, how am I going to change it? Because if, if you had a plan B, you, you would have started it as your plan A if it's going to be that good. Now you're 3-0 down. It's going to be a case of now it's the mental side of the game, right, you don't go under. Mm -hmm. That's all you want from your players. You don't want them to go under. Yeah. So how will how do you think he's going to manage that then, Jamie? I don't know. Maybe personnel. Um, and I, but again, you, you can't fault the personnel. It's just again the way that when City are pressing that position, it's forcing long balls or forcing a person in position to have to travel. We see Max Aaron literally travel from the right back area to the left wing to put a ball in behind a one v one v Kyle Walker. That you you haven't set up for that. Yes. So, what, how they're having to get out isn't something they've practiced and it's, it's so, it must be so frustrating but they need to come out of this game without a humbling scoreline because like the guy said before the game like this can dampen morale going yes. into games that are more winnable than Man City they didn't come here expect to win they hope to win um, but if you leave here six, five, six, seven, that just all of a sudden this question marks ask and it, it's not only the players it's the, the whole club that leaves a kind of dampening atmosphere within staff as well because again they'll be born with fans within the staff I think I think their shape as Julian sort of said if, they, if they're walking away from here and it's six or seven the question and everything mm -hmm. players whereas normally that it contains pretty much most Premier League teams mm -hmm. you know but it's just as you sort of said it's the fine margins you know as a defender you've got to be switched on 100% but even if you are switched on 100% for the majority of the game it's the movement of the opposition and how good that movement is and the, the actual quality of the pass mm -hmm. and the pace of the pass and stuff like that normally playing against other teams you'll get away with it yeah. but at this against these you're not and you feel so hard done by it because as Julian said they haven't done anything really wrong yeah 
but they're getting punished. Yeah, it's frightening. That's the kind of the gulf and quality there, yeah. I guess. Um, I know a lot of people, maybe from around the world, when they see a City score at 3-0, and if they're playing fantasy football like me, you're probably assuming one of those goals is Erling Haaland when you've got him captain. Not had his goal yet, Keith, but he, he's been close, particularly for that last chance at the end there. Yeah, I think we, we were all sort of nervous that thought he's going to hit it first time, but he, uh, he wanted to take a touch. A couple of crosses he's, uh, he's been in, uh, inches away from. I mean, but you know he's going to score. Uh, and again, I think he knows he's going to score, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's massively important when you're a centre forward, uh, and you know chances are coming. That either you're going to create them yourself, or you've got teammates that are going to create chances for you. It's, it's one of those you just keep yourself alive. With with the second half, then obviously, I mean, it's, it's probably quite obvious, Jolin. But you guess for for City, it's just you, you carry on doing what you're doing. Would you could you see any changes maybe a little bit into the second half, possibly? Maybe personnel. Um, you'd, you'd probably say Oscar Bob, um, in your greatest respect to him, you, you probably don't see him as a, a regular starter, so maybe opportunity to get him minutes and experience and also rest players. Mm -hmm. um, players that obviously, Pep will have players in mind that he knows are going to be more important than others coming into the next few weeks. Um, so yeah, there's opportunity to rest or give players legs and we, we, we spoke about it earlier, um, the, the Newcastle game against United and Eddie Howe coming out after the game saying he put players on instead of a training session so it isn't a day off so there's an opportunity to just again keep momentum and, and keep lads in the rhythm of actually um, an active day yeah absolutely as we know as well because we're getting into the uh, that business part of the season that busy winter time i mean that's always a lovely sight to see isn't it our three trophies from our treble winning campaign alongside the uh, club world cup as well there four trophies it never gets old looking at that um steve a quick word on uh, of course we had two people come into the fold from the derby in the form of ake and akanji at the back just wondered uh, how you thought they've gotten in those first in that first half they haven't had to do anything massively difficult, but yeah. actually what they have had to do, they've done very, very well. Looked very confident, composed. Um, I think Aki, in, initially on the first um, first sort of five, ten minutes, he had a couple of times he had to run back, but showed his strength, his power, mm -hmm. um, his pace, and gets in front of the, the forward and just eases him out and just passes it back. I mean, to think he's only 15 million is still beyond me, to be yeah. quite honest. Um, but yeah, two players, that's, that's done very, very well. Very well. I think um, if I was a Kanji, I'd be claiming that. I said I'm, I meant it. To be quite honest, yeah, oh yeah. I meant to step me back. I was <laughs> a bit. You've got to get them while you can. But uh, yeah, very, you know, cool, confident just looking good. We, we obviously know, I mean, I don't even need to say how much I, I love Jack Grealish, but obviously if you're, you're, you're sat on the bench and you're watching, you know, Doku do what he's doing, what, what, what do you think the, the thought is there? Obviously the trust there because he played in the derby yeah. and we know that, but um, obviously if you look and go, and kind of, I guess that's the whole thing of raising your game again, I guess. Yeah, and, and you've got to put it in perspective, like, in the greatest respect to Bournemouth, it's probably easier to do that against home, against them, than it is at Old Trafford against yes. our rivals. So Jack will be pleased for him that, that Pep has built a squad that doesn't have rivals within the squad. It's just a squad of players that know that whatever game you could be selected for, the manager is going to rely on you to, 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 to for a positive outcome. And all the players contribute all the time. There's never a period of time where you're questioning someone. So, so Jack will be pleased for him. Frustrated that he hasn't started, like we said, like every player wants to play every game, but mm -hmm. he won't be thinking, oh, that would have been me with two goals and an assist, it, it doesn't work like that. Do you, do you, is there anything you've seen or maybe even glimpses of? I mean, there's, there's a Bournemouth player there, they're already warming up, warming up, so we're assuming there might be a little change there, but even a glimpse of maybe something they could try do differently to, to get themselves back in the game, or is it literally just now a case of damage control? It is about, it is about that damage limitation, but again, but uh, at times you see them when they're playing out, so they're trying to play City as their own game, they're trying to be progressive uh, from the back, playing forward and through, but, the, but City are leaving them 3v3, and then you're saying, right, well, we can't compete with City playing through them. So, so let's take the game and City and say, right, we're going to go long, we're going to go direct, and we're going to play the game in their half. Mm -hmm. uh, and then very quickly, if you lose possession, then we get then we get everybody back behind the ball. Yes. But is it playing out, becoming open and expansive, it causes them massive problems when they lose when there's a turnover of possession. Yeah, with the quality of players as well, you're up against. Yeah. I mean, um, Jolene, you've, you've just uh, let out a little uh, <laughs> side there because as we can see, oh. live pictures from the Etihad Stadium, uh, Foden uh, stripped and ready. So maybe what we think. He's coming on. Uh, it must be an injury. Uh, yeah. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's just minutes, but it's not a player you want to see come on because Phil isn't a player that goes through the motions and would just see a game out. If, this, if he was coming on the 89th minute and it was 3-0, he'd want to yeah. score or assist. So you know he's going to be at it. So you're going to have to be at it. So yeah, like from a City perspective, great to see him come on. Hopefully the circumstances mean he's just resting someone, but 
Yeah. It's not. Who's he come on for? It was just, uh, I was just trying to work out then who, who I saw in there, uh, who I didn't. Well, I could actually probably look to see if we can work out. Rodri's there, Sadoku's so still on. Alvarez. 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 there. Alvarez or Haaland, maybe? Uh, Haaland. Possibly, possibly a ha- it, ha- yeah, yeah, it seems. Ha- uh, ha- Alistair Mann has said it's Haaland. Yeah. Let's hope that's not a. Uh, a little, not, he looked all right, though. Yeah, yeah. Fish, I, think, so. I, think, I think he, he, he did sit down for a long after his opportunity. He stayed on the floor for a little bit, so. Mm. Hopefully it's just precaution. Precautionary. Uh, gents, thanks as always. Right, we're back at full time. The lads are back on the pitch. So let's hand over to Alistair Mann and Andy Morrison who are your commentary team on the City app. It's Manchester City 3, Bournemouth 0. Uh, the predictions are still well and truly uh, in with the shout. So let's see if anyone's got it right. Come full time. We'll be back then. Uh, but for now, come on City. Yeah, thank you, Kel. Activity on the sidelines at half-time. We saw Haaland hobbling off after that one-on-one when he was stopped by Zabani. And Haaland has made way and Phil Foden has come on instead of him. Alvarez will presumably go to centre-forward. But there's also been a change for Bournemouth.